Yeah, it's recent race on through stuff that I... For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. You have an opportunity now to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and how to be saved. The gospel is that Christ died for your sins, was buried according to the Scriptures, and arose again the third day. I'm here to tell you that something's coming in your life is sure, more sure than taxes. It's called death. And after death, there's an afterlife. And in the afterlife, the Bible speaks about heaven or hell, and that is all. Heaven is meant by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, not to be condemned. Hell is by everything but Jesus. Religion is a good way to get to hell. Rejecting Jesus Christ will put you into hell and put you into hell for all eternity. Men are in hell today because they have rejected the free gift of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says in John 3.16 that you are perishable. You will die. You will not last in this earthly body. This earth will not last long. For God so loved the world. Yeah, God is love. God reached down to you and gave you something that you need. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. True love is sacrifice. True love is giving. Lust is when you take. Lust is when you want. But sacrifice, love, is when you give. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever, that's anybody, male, female, young, old, white, black, gray, brown, any age, any sex, Whosoever believeth in him, I said believeth in him, not taking him early, but receiving him by faith that he is God and God is Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish. You know what you can say to your life? One day, bye-bye. You may skip the hospital bed, but you will not skip the grave. You may not pay your taxes, but you will meet death one day. Death will come knocking on your door for sure. And after death, judgment. After death cometh judgment. Unless you are washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will fail that judgment. You will be held in condemnation against your soul to burn in hell by rejecting what God has done to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand here in the streets preaching all over Florida because you ain't going to go to church Sunday morning. And if you go to church Sunday morning, you ain't going to hear your modern preacher preaching this. You're going to hear lilies and kisses and butterflies. You ain't going to hear the gospel. You ain't going to hear about hell. And that's all prophesied in the Bible. The right of the sea in church age there in the past day, we stand here in the streets of the, of the world preaching just like they did in the book of Acts like Jesus preached on the streets. We bring the gospel to you because you need it. Today may be your last day on this planet. You don't know, I don't know. You may enter into eternity before night falls. And we come to you telling you about a saving grace of God by the Lord Jesus Christ. That you may have life, and have life more abundantly. God is not willing to put you in hell. The Bible says in Matthew, hell was made for Satan and his angels. But men are cast.
gates of the hell by rebelling against what God has said. God has said to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is what God said. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. God does not want you to die and go to hell. But it's your choice. It's a free will given to you. There's a blank check ready to put your name on it. It is signed and sealed by the gospel, by the blood of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. All you got to do is put your name on it. All you have to do is say, Lord God, I want to receive that payment. I want Jesus Christ as my Savior. I want to live for eternity. I want to be with the God that died for me. I want to be with the God that created me. God did not send Jesus Christ to judge you. He sent to save you. For God sent not to save the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him may be saved. That Him is the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the payment made. That is the only payment that God will receive for your eternal soul. You ain't going to go up to Him and say, I ain't for Jesus' body. You ain't going to say, I walked with ladies across the street. You ain't going to walk up and say, I gave tithes. You ain't going to walk up. No, the only offering that God will receive into heaven is the Lord Jesus Christ, the shed work upon Calvary, the sinless blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, a lamb without spot. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You will have eternal life with the one that created you. You will have eternal life with the one that died for you. You will have eternal life with the one that had victory over the grave. In three days and three nights, the Bible proclaims he's not here, he is risen. Well, I'm here to tell you if you go to Rome, every foot is still in the grave. Muhammad's still in the grave. All your Asian philosophers are still in the grave. All your preachers are in the grave. All men are in the grave still. But Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God in victory. Victory over death. Victory over the grave. And you can have that same victory through Christ. There is no condemnation to those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is eternal life. It is that you may not perish. You can die and still have life. In your life, you can have more abundantly in Christ. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Listen to me, friends. Believing not on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are already in hell. You've got to change your, your direction. You've got to change your travel plans. Your, your travel plans right now is you are destined for hell by rejecting Jesus Christ, and you need to make tickets to heaven. And the tickets are already paid. The ticket price is the shed blood upon Calvary. The sinless blood of the world which take away the sin of the world. Change your direction, my friends. You ain't born to go to heaven. You're born to go to hell. For all have sinned and come to share the glory of God.
the message for you, but to believe what the Bible says. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Get out of your religion. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believes not is con condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I'm going to tell you the truth about the Bible. Adulterers are not in hell. Thieves are not in hell. Murderers are not in hell. Those who have rejected Jesus Christ are in hell. You could be a good church person and be in hell with Hitler. You could be a good church person and be in hell with all those who have killed Christians. There is no degrees of sin. All have sinned. Sin is sin no matter what it is. It has to be paid. And you can't do it. How much does adultery cost? Where's the menu? How much does a lie cost? How much does theft cost? I'll tell you how much theft costs. When Adam and Eve took that fruit that God told them not to eat, He kicked them right out of the garden and gave us death. And gave us sin. And gave us a curse. And you're going to pay your way into heaven. You think you are so good to get to heaven because of who you are? Excuse my Latin, but bull. You ain't good enough. And you need to get under a preacher who'll tell you you're not good enough and tell you that you're a sinner because you're going to face one God, God one day and you better not have God tell you you're a sinner. You better face God under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You better be cleansed by the precious blood of that Lamb. You better not be found in condemnation. Because you can't rip out your wallet and your credit cards at that day of judgment. God doesn't receive cash, check, or money orders. God receives the precious blood of His Son. That is all He receives. Stores will tell you, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Heaven says, no blood, no entrance. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can cleanse away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. Hey, I just put the light switch on you. The light is the Lord Jesus Christ. You are in darkness. You are in bondage to Satan in the world. And I come in with the light to show you the glorious light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to show you the eternal life. The only way that God appears, I am showing you a light. The King James 1611 Bible. The light, the Lord Jesus Christ, the light. I have turned the light on. Some of you want the light to be dimmer switched. Sorry. You flip me on and you get full light. I ain't going to water down the gospel. I ain't going to give you tootsie rolls. I ain't going to give you a sugar-coated message. I am not a diabetic preacher. I am a full Bible preacher to proclaim what God has said, to be faithful to God and His Word. And wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ if I am not. But light has come to you on this Saturday morning to know what you need to do before you die. Because after you die, it's too late. And the doctor says, I can't do nothing. And the doctor says, it's terminal. It's too late. And I am telling you that your life, your life today, no matter how old are you, no matter what your age, no matter who you are, 
life is terrible. You will die. And you will face God. And you will face judgment. And let it be under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And so speaketh Dr. Seuss. And this condemnation that light is coming to the world, that men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Men do not want the gospel. Men do not want the light. Men do not want God because they like to rebel. They like their darkness. You are liking in John chapter 3 like a cockroach. A cockroach goes around in the night and when people are not around and when you turn that light on, that cockroach runs. You have had the light and you do not want the light. But we stand to show the light, to show you your lives, your death, and the coming judgment that God has placed upon you, that you will die, and you will face judgment one day. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. This guy hates the light. This guy hates the Bible. But they that love God, they are not. The Bible are known of God, and God looks upon them. God is willing to look upon you if you will come to Calvary, if you will come to the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and proclaim that you're a sinner and you're facing death. Go away. No. This man just really likes three eggs and handfuls. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. If you want truth, if you want to do right, if you want God to save your soul, truth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. The only way to be saved by God is to come to the way, to the truth, and the life. John 14, 6, and John 14, 7, there's only way, one way to the Father. There's only one way to the Father. And that is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the only way. And that is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I hold in my hand the book. This man holds in his hand nonsense. This is the word. This is from God. This is inspired that you may know all about God and what He wants of your life. This guy holds nothing. He just holds a big mouth of foolishness. He doesn't even know what the Bible says because he has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Had he would, he'd be holding the Bible telling you the truth this day. He will be found in condemnation and darkness one day, wishing he had received Christ, wishing he had heard this preacher. That gentleman that told me, go away and told me to shut up, shows that John chapter 3, that you hate the light, you want darkness. Thank you very much for proving to me the Bible's right. Thank you for showing me the Bible's right, gentlemen. I'll be done with it pretty soon. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Not that he has received Christ by mouth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Not that, not that he has done works to be saved. Not that he has given money to be saved. Not that he went and gave shoes to the orphans in China to be saved. But he that believeth on the Son. The Son is the Lord Jesus Christ who is God. And God is Jesus Christ. God is the remedy. God is the medicine. God is the cure for your death. For the wages of sin is death. You have a terminal condition, and God is offering you life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, because I am not ashamed of the gospel. I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior, April 1987. I am not ashamed of Jesus. I am not ashamed of God. I am not ashamed of the Bible. And I want you, my prayer is for you today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What must I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16:31. You ain't going to get this preaching in a church today. You ain't going to get hellfire. You're going to get lilies and 
and pansies and Easter eggs and bunnies, which are nothing to do with the Bible. But the Bible says, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Lamb, not the bunny, take away the sin of the world. That is your answer. That is your remedy. That is to be your way. If not, if you believe not on God, you will be cast in the lake of fire for all eternity. That is called hell. Imagine God telling you one day, go to hell. Imagine God telling you that. I've had men tell me to go to hell. I used to say go to hell. But imagine God, the Holy God, telling you one day, go to hell. And that's your eternity. And you can't change it. Once you die, it's too late. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to repent. Repent! At least you perish. Turn or burn! That's what the Bible says. But yet, the Holy God, He wants you to repent. He wants you to get right. First John 1 John 1.9 God is so mean. God is so bad. Really? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Does that sound like a wicked, untrue God? Now, if you want to come to God right now and say, God, I'm a sinner. I need your payment. I need to be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll make you white as snow. Let's see what else that mean, rotten, awful God has to say. Luke chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. That mean, nasty, rotten God who, who destroys everybody. Psalms chapter 1. Why did I hold the word, the word of life? Where's that other guy? He's gone. He has nothing. He has no hope. He's without God. He's without Christ. He's gone. Except for events that happen in my life, every other week we try to be here. We try to be here to witness the gospel and things happen in our life. But we try to be here to show you the gospel. The other guy's gone. I'm not. What was I going to read? I forgot what I was going to read. Isaiah, I'm in Psalms. Hold on. Isaiah 1. I'm in Psalms chapter 1. I'm, I'm in the wrong place. But I'm not in the wrong place in eternity. I am seated in heavenly places by the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Isaiah chapter 1. Now let me find the place. This is that mean, angry God, full of wrath. This is what God says in Isaiah 1. Come now. That's a command of God. You know the Big Ten? Well, here's God saying to Isaiah, come now. God is commanding you to come. And let us reason together. God says, let's sit down and let's reason. God says, come. And God says, reason. Now, is that a mean God? Is that a wrathful God? Well, all these storms and all these children that die, that's because of sin. That's not because of God. That's because you're rebelling. It was man, it was man and woman that rebelled against God in the garden. That's where these catastrophes come.